Welcome to the Gear Vlogs Automotive Podcast, Season 3, Episode 12. In today's video, I talk about Ford trying to patent a dystopian future where self driving cars repo themselves, a Russian oligarch abandons an $81 million yacht, Lewis Hamilton is already mad about his car, Autobots roll out alongside the U.S. debut of the Vision 357 and Swan Car and highlights of the Maserati MC20 Spider. Now, if this is your first time here, thanks for coming by. I'm Mario Gear, and I've been involved in the automotive industry for well over 15 years. I'm sharing my enthusiasm for all automotive topics with you. Let's begin. Alrighty, our first story of the day is Ford tries to patent a dystopian future where self-driving cars repo themselves. The automaker filed a patent for a vehicle system that punishes drivers directly if they fail to keep up with their payments. Okay. Car companies often talk about Autonomous vehicles as an avenue towards increased freedom, enabling more people to access roadways and giving drivers back their time and attention. But at least one auto giant is considering alternate or darker uses of still exclusive self-driving technology. Ford has filed a patent for theoretical tech that would, among other things, allow its vehicles to repossess themselves if a driver falls behind on payments. In Ford's version of the future, delinquent customers' cars could drive the sums back to a dealership or to an impound lot or even a scrapyard if the owner fails to pay up in time. Unfortunately, this is no joke. The U.S. Patent Office published the company's application last Thursday in February about one and a half years after Ford first filed it. The patent titled System and Methods to Repossess a Vehicle hasn't been officially granted yet, but is nonetheless an unsettling peek into an alternative universe where private companies have more, even more of a say over our day-to-day -day lives. The automaker's dystopian proposed and patented ver vision or version of reality, a couple skipped car payments would trigger a cycle of in-car consequences or a multi-step repossession procedure, as it's called in the document. First, an owner behind on their loan would get a notice of delinquency sent via their infotainment system screen. If the driver fails to respond to the notice, there would be a second one. Then your Ford personal vehicle would slowly transform into a version of hell. I can just imagine with the power and um, control that uh, the automakers could have. But let's keep reading on. The company proposes a varied early punishments for delinquent car owners. For instance, a vehicle that could disable its own air conditioning, automatic key, GPS, or music system. Another idea Ford floats in the patent filing is activating an audio component in the vehicle to emit an incessant and unpleasant sound every time the owner is present in the vehicle, which seems incredibly un unsafe. I agree. Let's see, vehicle distractions or would it be a timely buzz, kind of like your seatbelt warning buzzer, you know, sound. Who knows? Um, but yeah, if the horrible noise and or minimal minimized functionality and comfort doesn't entice a car owner to catch up on their money, the repo process would then progress to locking a driver out of their car. Ford notes that this lockout condition could be variably enforced, potentially allowing people to access their cars in a medical emergency via a complicated system of user monitoring 
or still get back and forth to work by only restricting travel outside of certain zones or times. Where, why, you might ask? Because Ford cares about getting its money. No kidding. Allowing the use of the vehicle during weekdays avoids adversely affecting a livelihood of the owner of the vehicle and hampering their ability to make payments, the company wrote. And still, if the lockout doesn't work, Ford has filed a patent tech that would allow its vehicles to self-repo. The company proposed versions of this idea that could work with both semi-autonomous and fully autonomous cars. In the former, the vehicle would move to a short distance to a more easily tow away by a repo company. In the latter, the car would drive itself all the way back to a dealership it was purchased from or a nearby impound or scrapyard, depending on the vehicle's value. The company also includes safeguards against owner defenses. For example, locking the vehicle in a closed garage that would automatically notify the police. That one, I think, would be a stretch for Ford or any automotive company because of the fact that I think a law enforcement agency is going to say, hey, look, we're not in the repossession business. We're uh, in the to serve and protect business. And they'll probably use that age-old famous line of, that's a civil matter. So, you know, comment down below what you guys would think about that, that particular scenario. What do you guys think? Um, anyway, let's get back into it. So just to recap, in a possible future reality, a Ford car could lock you out, cut off your AC, produce terrible sounds, takes itself to a junkyard for parts if you miss enough payments and call the cops on you. Hmm. This is not the only absurd patent Ford has filed for its vehicles. In a 2018 filing, the company outlined a proposal for an autonomous police car that uses AI to more effectively hide from and catch violators of traffic laws. The automaker has also patented a bonkers movie screen windshield in preparation for a far off future where people no longer need to watch the road in front of them. Also, the company has filed patents to bring billboards inside of your car and build vehicles with detachable motorcycles. Hmm. Christian Nolan's Batman Batmobile? Eh, whatever. To be fair, Ford and many companies do this sort of thing a lot. It doesn't necessarily mean the automaker actually plans to put any of these tech into play. However, the self-repoing car proposal sounds uniquely lame, and the company has clearly put a lot of time, thought, and detail into the 14-page application that includes schematics, explanations of how this self-repossessing vehicle internet connective connectivity would work for maximum efficiency efficient yeah efficiency we submit patents on new inventions as a normal course of business but they aren't necessarily all indications of new business or product plans said ford spokesman wes sherwood of to gizmodo via email the company did not respond to questions about any aspects of this newly patent technology are in development. Notably, much of the system proposed in Ford's recent patent applications would be dependent on upon vehicles much more autonomous than what the company currently has. Although Ford previously said it was aiming to build the biggest self-driving car fleet in the world, the company announced it was abandoning its goal of a fully self-driving cars by October 2022. So, yeah, what do you guys think? So, yeah, obviously they're just hedging their bets and uh, don't want to give a gift horse in the mouth, so to speak. So, 
yeah, just comment down below what you guys think on that aspect. Alrighty, a Russian oligarch abandoned this $81 million yacht. Now it can be yours. The Alpha Nero comes with a helipad and an infinity pool and 267 feet of pure luxury. Remember last year when seizing yachts owned by Russian oligarchs was the rage? Well, the authorities are now trying to unload some of these luxurious machines and the government of Antigua, Barbada have quite the deal for you. It announced on Monday that if no one comes forward to claim the super yacht, the Alpha Nero will go to auction. It seems the vessel has been unmaintained and unoccupied since February of 2022. The owner of the Alpha Nero super yacht is technically unknown, but the U.S. government has a distinct hunch that the crap belongs to an Andre Guryev, a billionaire who made his money in fertilizer. Guryev doesn't just have screw you money at an estimate worth of at least $10 billion. That's a lot of fertilizer. He has thrown away an $81 million super yacht money. Dang. That's a lot of money. Goryev denies owning the yacht, saying he simply is the beneficiary of a trust that owns the yacht, which sure seems above board to me. However, he is, or he or his trust is about to be one yacht less. <laughs> as the Antigua Barbado government have dubbed the empty and seamlessly abandoned 267-foot yacht a hazard to other vessels moving in and out of Falmouth Harbor in Antigua. Russian oligarchs keep ownership of such vessels veiled in layers of red tape and shell companies. The date of the Alpha Nero abandonment in the Caribbean alone, February 22, when sanctions were being handed out by governments around the world against Russia warmongers, points to its Russian rich guy origins. This big boat has set for years with no one coming forward to claim or maintain it. So Antigua and Barbados announced Monday that the owner of the yacht, whomever it may be, wink, wink, has 10 days to claim the Alpha Nero before it goes up for auction and is sold to the highest bidder. Now, I don't condone it, but whatnot. If this particular yacht was, well, abandoned, quote, wouldn't it have been a prime target for some of these squatting community. Think about it. If you have enough squatters that can know how to manage a boat, you got yourself a floating house. But I'm just throwing it out there, and I don't condone it. I'm just throwing it out there to any potential uh, folks who are uh, finding themselves in need of a home. Hey, there you go. So what do you get for your high bid? You get a yacht built by Dutch ship builder Ocean Co., which also put together Jeff Bezos' controversial sailing yacht. The Alpha Nero features an onboard spa, jacuzzi, nearly 40-foot infinity pool, and more, according to the Robe Report. And, yeah, so... Links to this story, as well as all the rest of the stories that mentioned tonight, will be uh, in the show notes. So, yeah, let's move on to our next story. Lewis Hamilton is already mad about his car. Quote, I've driven so many cars in my life, I know what a car needs, Hamilton said. I know what a car doesn't need. Okay. 
Lewis Hamilton's car was not its best last year when Hamilton finished in sixth place for the championship and Mercedes finished third in the Constructors' Championship. Both resulted results below their standards. But last year was also the first year of many rules changes, so we all sort of gave Mercedes a mulligan. Perhaps Mercedes was still adapting, even as Red Bull didn't seem to have much of a problem. This year, Mercedes got less of a pass, and based on results at the season opener, Bahrain Grand Prix, Mercedes still has a lot of work to do. In a new interview with BBC Podcast, Hamilton naturally says that the biggest problem might be that Mercedes didn't listen to one Lewis Hamilton. Uh, You can read the little caption here from the Guardian, but um, you guys can read that in the article. Uh, Let's see here. Here it goes on to talk about basically, yeah, Hamilton and his team uh, possibly throwing somebody getting thrown under the bus, blah, blah, blah. Um, yeah, I'll let you guys read the article. I, you know, whatnot. So we have that one. Autobots roll out alongside the U.S. debut of the Vision 357 and a Swan car. Porsche creative creativity makes a return to South by Southwest. Spotlighting one of a kind collaboration, Porsche returns to South by Southwest will be led by the public debut of Mirage from the upcoming Paramount Pictures film Transformers Rise of the Beasts. South by Southwest celebrates creativity in all forms from new tech to film to music, meaning it's an idea venue for Porsche to reveal its latest creative endeavors. Highlighting will include Mirage and, tw- and two 20 foot statues of Optimus Prime and Optimus Primal from the upcoming Transformers Rise of the Beast movie. Joined by the incredible Vision 357 design study making its U.S. debut and inspiring works of automotive art by Daniel R. Strim, Vex, and Chris LeBroy. Porsche Vision 357 homepage, homage to the first Porsche model line of the 356. Porsche is now embarking on an anniversary year with the Porsche Vision 357, and a reference to the Porsche 356, the dream of very Porsche of the sports car. And whatnot. Porsche is returning for its second year to the festival, which attracts tens of thousands of professionals to Austin, Texas. The exhibit will run from March 10th through the 14th, in downtown Austin, 400 Congress Avenue, highlighting unique and bold designs, but also numerous panel discussions centered on collaboration with partners like Paramount Pictures, FaZe Clan, Up Labs, and Who Hodinkee. That's a mouthful. Porsche X, Collaborations Unseen is the title of the installation just a few blocks from Austin's Convention Center. Once inside, guests will find themselves immersed in an intimate environment among some of the most exciting collaborations from Porsche Design Team and its partners. Rooted in the Porsche spirit of being driven by dreams, The exhibit is designed to connect dreamers across disciplines. And there we go. So, 
So, yep, as usual, links to this story will be in the uh, show notes. Okay. Let's move on to our next story. Here we got some, uh, the new Mercedes MC20 CeeLo. The MC20 super sports car, now also a spider. Some of the highlights include electrically retractable glass roof, polymer dispensed liquid crystal technology, in-car experience in multifaceted, all-encompassing, with a roof closed and opaque, a unique sky feeling when the roof is transparent, multi-sensory when the top is down. The Prima Series Launch Edition of the Maserati MC20 exclusively features a new three-layer color known as... I'm not going to even be able to pronounce it. (laughs) It's part of the Maserati customization program in addition to limited color. This particular color, the MC20 CeeLo, will also feature exclusive content. Uh, Hold up here. And we go, boom. And here's some uh, video footage courtesy of Maserati. Let's see. The new model retains best-in-class specifications of the MC20 supercar, bold in every aspect. It emphasizes Maserati's typical Gran Turismo spirit. The Spider is designed for perfection while maintaining the dynamic performance and driving pleasure of a coupe. Excellent power to weight ratio. With minimal increase in weight from the coupe, the body is made of carbon fiber and composite materials in its entirety. An ideal situation solution for an all configurations to come, coupe, spider, and in the future, electric. Storage space and interior roominess remains unchanged from the coupe version. Refined, clean, and innovative 360-degree aerodynamics tested in a wind tunnel. Great acoustic comfort ensures everyday usability, minimalizing vibration. So yeah, here we go on the car, and there's that a shot of the roof and transparency. Um, and apparently the roof can retract in under 12 seconds. If I remember reading correctly somewhere. So, yeah, there we go. Uh, pretty much it. So, I think we're going to end this story here. Um, so if you're not following me, please get, consider giving me a follow, hit that notification bell or whatever. So you get notified when I upload my next one. I tried to do this at least five days a week. Um, yeah. So be on the lookout for, uh, every new episode. So Monday through Friday, I try to upload new episodes. Um, thank you for, uh, taking the time. If you made it this far. Um, yeah, consider giving a follow and whatever platforms that you have found me on, be it, uh, YouTube, Spotify, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok, Locals, Rumble, and so on. So thank you. And, uh, here are a couple.